Vacation begins in a few days. The legis legislation session is almost over. Even more than usual, Ingrid's rushing back and forth between her office, where she has back-to-back -back appointments and a legislative assembly where she's supposed to speak. She is 35 years old, and she's been a member of the legislature for two years. It is coming towards 33 in the afternoon while she is talking with someone in her office. I poke my head into the door. Someone's seen you right away, Ingrid. A man. Does he have an appointment? No, but he's very interesting. All right. Tell him I'll see him immediately after this person. That's no more than half an hour. That's all the time I have. He walks in elegant, in his 40s, average height, neither handsome nor ugly, so that later I will be unable to describe him or identify him. Thank you. We've been following your work with the greatest attention, Dr. Tara, and we have the highest regard for what you're doing. She smiled at each other. I sit erect with my elbows on the desk that separate us. I assume he's going to ask for something, like most of the people who come to see me. That's why I wanted to meet you, Dr. Tara. We're very worried about you. Columbia is going through a period of great tension, great violence. One must be careful, very careful. Then he frowns, grows more serious, stops looking me in the eyes. I'm used to this kind of talk. Most of the people I meet and who support me share this obsession with danger. Women, in particular, invariably assure me with genuine affection that they're praying that nothing happens to me, that God will protect me. I try to convince them that my security is very tight and I'm in no danger, because I believe those in power exploit this fear that grips Colombians. What better way to destroy people's hopes than to persuade them that anyone who dares to speak to accuse will inevitably be eliminated? Don't worry, I tell this man. I'm very well protected. I'm surrounded by a discreet but highly effective security apparatus. There's nothing to fear. That said, I'm grateful for your interest in my welfare. But what can I do for you? Surprisingly, he repeats what I've taken to be a polite introduction to a request. His eyes a little steelier. I'd like to know you better, Dr. Tara, but the reason I'm here is to warn you. We are extremely concerned. That's very kind of you, and I'm touched by your concern. But I have very little time, as my, secu my secretary must have told you. I look at my watch, making sure he sees me do it. You haven't understood me. I'm telling you that you must really be careful. This time, there's nothing friendly in his face. He sits there and looks at me fixedly. I realize that he's not the kind of visitor I'd imagine. Not a citizen in distress who's come to ask for help, or a bashful admirer, but an emissary with a very specific message for me. I also change my tone. What's the message? You want to give me a message? What is it? Are you threatening me? No, this is not a threat. I'm not here to frighten you. You have to realize that you're in danger that your family is in danger. I'm speaking to you on behalf of people who've already put out a contract on you. They advise you to leave because the decision has already been made. To be perfectly clear, what I'm telling you, Dr. Tara, is that we've already paid the securities. I feel the blood drain from my face. Suddenly, I know he's not lying. In Colombia, the Cicero, Cicero makes everything clear. 
Caesareans are young men with motorcycles who live in Columbia's poorest neighborhood, and they're hired every day to kill people for ridiculously small sums of money. I've turned a corner, crossed a red line, and this time the period of intimidation is really over. Six months earlier, as I was leaving the Capitol on a cold night in July, shots were fired at my car and that of my bodyguards. No one was hit, and I tried to believe that we'd just been at the wrong time, rock place at the wrong time. In short, what you're telling me is that you're going to kill me. I've come to tell you to leave because steps have already been taken. He gets up and he holds out his hand. Politely says goodbye and leaves. Did I shake his hand? Did I even smile back at him? It's entirely possible that I did. I no longer remember.